In this video, we'll write the net ionic equation for sodium carbonate plus copper 2 sulfate. The first thing we need to do when we write net ionic equations is balance the molecular equation. And this is the molecular equation. In this case, it's already balanced. This is a double displacement reaction where the sodium and the copper, they switch places. So it's already balanced. We then write the state for each of the substances here. So sodium carbonate here, sodium compounds are usually aqueous and then copper 2 sulfate, that's also aqueous. Sodium sulfate here, let's check that on a solubility table just to make sure. So on our solubility table, we can find the sodium right here and the sulfate here. So we go across right here and down, soluble. So that means that this is going to be aqueous. The copper 2 carbonate though, let's find copper right here and the carbonate, as we go down and over, that has an I. That means that that is insoluble. It's not going to be dissolved. It's going to be a solid at the bottom of the test tube or the beaker. So we're going to write S after our copper 2 carbonate. So this is a precipitate. Okay, we have the states for each one of the substances in our net ionic equation. So for sodium, that's in group 1 on the periodic table. That has a 1 plus ionic charge. So we'll write a plus up here. Carbonate, we're going to need to look that up on a table of common polyatomic ions. And if you do, you'll see that that's 2 minus. Copper, that's a transition metal, so we really don't know the charge. But the sulfate, SO4, if we look that up, that has a charge of 2 minus. So the copper, that has to be 2 plus. So over on this side, we have our plus and then our 2 minus here for the sulfate. The copper 2 carbonate, we don't split that up. It's a solid, so it stays together in this reaction. So we have the ions, and now we can split them up. So we have Na+, plus, and we have two of those right there. So we'll put a two in front of that, and I'll write aqueous at the end. I won't write that now. Plus the carbonate ion, that CO3, two minus, plus the copper two ion, Cu2+, plus, and then we have SO4, 2 minus, that's sulfate ion. So these right here are the reactants in our net ionic equation. For the products here, we have Na plus again, and we have that 2 there. So we have two of those, plus we have the sulfate ion, SO4, 2 minus, and then we have the whole copper carbonate, copper 2 carbonate, which is going to stay together because it's a solid. So this is the complete ionic equation. And from here, we can cross out the spectator ions. These are the ions that are the same on both sides. In effect, they don't change. We have two sodium ions here, and we have two here in the products. So we can cross these out because they haven't changed. We're not interested in things that are the same. We want to look at the change. SO4, 2 minus here in the reactants, in the products, we have it again. Cross it out. That leaves us with the net ionic equation. We have the carbonate ion, copper 2 ion, and then the products, this copper 2 carbonate. So from here, let's clean this up and then write the net ionic equation a little bit neater. So this is the net ionic equation here for Na2CO3 plus CuSO4, sodium carbonate plus copper 2 sulfate. Sometimes they'll put the copper 2 ion first in the equation. It really doesn't matter. This is the correct net ionic equation. And this is Dr. B with the net ionic equation for sodium carbonate and copper 2 sulfate. Thanks for watching.